when last we wandered these myriad plains. Requind gets into a stance, looks left, looks right, then faces you. His face clenches, then, with a grunt, he breaks wind again. The smell nearly levels you. <laughs> okay, but he takes no notice. And still, we journey on. An unfortunate tale. I had other questions for you. First, though, I think I will exit this conversation and kill these thugs to get rid of this combat music. Come to me, thuggies. Come over here, and I shall give you what you seek. One more, and there's another up here in the fog of war, it looks like. Come on now. All right, let's go finish this guy off. Done. Get him. Yes. Yes, the finest Toledo blades. Tantious folly. The Karak sings true. Uh huh. You must have crit. I think they say things when they crit. Like Mort says, Oh, my inventory Done. must need managing again. Please excuse me. Okay. Inventory managed. We shall loot these peoples for what little they have. Ooh, that one's bronze. Done. And a dirty rat charm. I wonder if that is a rat tail. I know it says charm, but I wonder if that's what we term in, turn into the uh, office of vermin or whatever it is. All right. Let's finish our conversation with Reekwind here. Hmm. Can you tell me about this area? The hive. The hive. A tale I can tell. A tale I can tell I will. But three coppers must I see. He smacks his gums together and snorts like a pig. Very well. Here's three coppers. Spireward, spireward. Oh, this is the dangerous angles again. Uh, actually, I don't have time for the story now. I had some other questions. Sadly, we lost some coppers. Can you tell me where I could find someone named Farod? Requin suddenly hunches over and leers at you. He walks around you for a moment, dragging his leg as if lame. A king. A noble tale, a noble tale. A tale I can tell, but three coppers must I see. Requind remains hunched over, staring at you. Once a man of respect, Farad was. A man, a man of goals and position. All became nothing. Nothing turned to air. Requind squints then breaks wind, filling the air with a gut-churning smell. Turn to air and stink. A liar, a cheater, a man who twisted law, Farad was. He hunches over, as if writing at a desk. He writes for a moment, then suddenly stops, afraid. Then one day, he found that he had twisted himself. Such a liar he had become, that when he died... He was to go to a horrible place. Requind shakes his head sadly, then hunches over again and looks wildly in all directions. Farad would not accept it. Would not. Would not. He had cheated others. He would cheat his fate too. He read, dug in books, and consulted seers. Requind stalks back and forth, his hand over his eyes as if staring off into the distance. And they told him that only in trash could he find that which would let him cheat his fate. Requind breaks wind again, then he gives a reeking cough. Perhaps they lied. Updated my journal. Requind stands up stiffly, then begins to fling off imaginary clothes. With every piece of clothing he throws away, he becomes more hunched. Farad threw away his position, his goals and took up a new title. Requind stops, then leers at you. His cl he claws at his rags, shaking them, and became a king of rags. 
he would rule the trash, have his subjects search it all, and find that which he needed. He shakes his head. He looks even now. Even now. Um, do you know where I could find him? Reekwind shakes his head. He lives amongst rags and trash. There, you will find him. Find him. I had some other questions. I'm missing a journal. Have you seen one? Reekwind breaks wind, then scratches his arms. He thinks for a moment, then shakes his head. No journal, no journal have I seen. I had some other questions for you. I believe we should be able to do something in the I'd like to hear a story option. Here's three copper. All right, here's what we're wanting. I want to hear the story of the man who came to this city without a name or memory and spoke with the cursed storyteller who warned him of the danger of names. In other words, tell me about me. Requind stops twitching and scratching for a moment and stares at you. That tell, that tell costs nothing, for it is worth nothing, and it is worth noting that it would be a sad tell indeed. Nevertheless, I would hear it. Where would such a tell begin? Reekwind grunts, then gives a reeking wheeze that makes your eyes tear up. He seems to be thinking. It would begin with a man waking up in the mortuary, believed dead, but in truth, only his memories are dead. Requind nods, then studies you and starts scratching himself violently, as if to give himself scars. Dead, but not dead. No memories. No memories, no name. He escapes the mortuary, enters the hive, and speaks to a man who let his true name slip once and has regretted it. Requind seems hypnotized by your words. Yes, yes, much danger in naming. Perhaps, he pauses, perhaps the man to whom the nameless one speaks is a warning to the danger of names. He seems to chew this over. Perhaps he who has forgotten his name is better off. Is he? Is it better to suffer the truth with all its consequences, or is it better to remain ignorant? Which of the two men is better off? Requind gives a hacking cough, then spits, the spittle green and wet. Then he turns back to you. It is your question, your tell. He speaks slowly. It is you who must answer it. Hmm. I am going to choose the man who knows his true name is better off, for he knows himself and is the stronger person for it. Ooh, a thousand experience. Very welcome. Requind mulls this over, licking his lips. He begins to nod slowly, then mumbles under his breath, as if debating with himself. Eventually, he turns back to you. That is a tale. A tale with a moral. And that tells the tailor's morals. He coughs and spits another phlegmy glob onto the cobblestones. A tale that will answer itself in time. In time? Truth. It must have an answer, and every tale has an ending. I will refuse to accept it any other way. Requind scratches himself for a moment, nodding, then reaches into the folds of his robe and flicks you a coin. For such a tale, a clipped copper. He sneers. No more, for the tale's not finished. A fair price. Very well, then. 
Perhaps there are some questions you can answer for me. Actually, I think I've talked with you enough, Reekwind. Farewell. I think that eventually we can actually cure him of his curse. I may be misremembering, though. Let's see what else we can find. Iron nails or nails. It's two L's. I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Well, let's speak with her. This broad-shouldered woman is shuffling about amongst the huge beams lying on the street. She kicks at the beams with iron-shod boots. Every once in a while, she bends down and wrenches a nail from one of the boards with her bare hands. She holds each one up, appraising it, then drops it in the leather sling bag. Greetings. She straightens up, hearing your approach. She's smiling politely, but from her stance and the way her hand rests close to the hilt of her weapon, you can tell she's ready for trouble. You notice one of her eyes has a milky film over it. That's close enough there, Cutter. What do you need from me? I had some questions. She nods. Ask away, then. Who are you? She pulls three nails from her sling bag, tossing them, spinning into the air, and catching them in her palm. Iron nails, they call me. I guess it is nails. She drops them back into the bag with a muffled clink. Why are you collecting the nails? I sell them to a man, Nama Hamris, in the lower ward. Maker of coffins, he is. Tell me more of this, Hamrys. There's not much to say. He's a bit chatty. He'll rattle his bone box to your barmy if you let him. But a fair bargainer. He needs the nails. I need the jink. And that's about as far as it goes. Where is this lower ward? Eh. I used to know the way I did. But the Dabas have changed the streets round again. Don't know how to get there now. I'll need to chart a new path. But I figure the Dabus will straighten things out eventually. Okay, then. Does anyone else here scavenge nails? She grins and shakes her head. No one was clever enough or had the will to do it before me, and I shoved off anyone who's tried to jump me claim since. She pats the long-bladed dagger hanging at her side, lovingly. Excuse me, your claim. Aye, that's what I call it. Honest labor's hard to come by in the hive, and I'm not about to let some sodden piker peel me off me work. I've sent more than one burke running and howling, holding their guts in, or off to the collectors if they were unlucky. Her dead eye gleams maliciously, the hive knows this spot as iron nails it does. Is that how your eye was ruined? Nail's face turns hard. None of your business, Burke. Why? Would you like a matching wound for your collection? No, not really. I had some other questions. She nods. Ask away, then. Can you tell me about this place? Look, Cutter, I've got a lot of work to do. The nails aren't finding their way into my bag while I'm spilling chant with you. Why don't you pick another Cutter's brain box about that for a time? All right, well then, let me ask you something else. I'm looking for a man named Farad. She nods. I heard that name I have. Head of a pack of collectors, or so I hear it. Not sure where a body would find him, though. You may want to try Ragpicker Square. It's a north and west from here. A whole mess of collectors call Kip there. Something else. Have you seen a journal in your nail hunting? I'm looking for one. Nay, I have not. She pauses for a moment. You know, that's a good idea, tis. A journal. Mayhap I should start one of my own. Yes, it is. Amazing how much one can forget. A journal 
can help you hold on to your memories. She mulls over what you said. Hey, you're right. You're right indeed, Cutter. I'll do it. I thank you for the idea. Of course, I had some other questions. Maybe. Perhaps I've exhausted everything. And it looks like I have. So never mind. Farewell. Alright, so we didn't really get any journal right. updates or anything there. See, there's a laborer. A laborer. There's a hive merchant. Can we sell some things to this guy then? I want to save first before I do that. Would love to unload some inventory. This dowered-faced old fellow appears to be selling various hand weapons. Ah, come over then. Come to see my blades, have ya? Yes, I have. Alrighty then, excuse me while I buy and sell. Alright, so done selling. Quite a bit richer. Quite a bit emptier in the inventory of everyone associated with us. For some reason, this gentleman refuses to buy rings of any sort, so we'll just hold on to those for a bit. I also sold the uh, ancient earring and our, took our rings off that we were wearing and went ahead and equipped the negative token here. So hopefully that will protect us a bit from shadows if they arise. Also discovered during that that in this interface that we've got, I can switch to actual numbers on their hit points. So I think I'll do that. Mm, I don't trust the gif. I say we leave him behind. Ah, Mort, you, you got to trust people. It's not going to be just me and you on this journey, okay? Let's see if this merchant actually has anything to say now that we've finished buying and selling from him. Now that we have, uh, sold you some things, I have some questions. I've got a job to do, sir. He turns his head suddenly and coughs into his hand. Excuse me, as I was saying, I can't well stop selling just to speak with you. Are you sick? Oh, nay, Cutter, just old. I thank you for the concern, though. He smiles at you. Well, can you tell me something about the area? This? Just another marketplace in the hive. Worst ward in our blessed city, a sigil. He smiles bitterly, then shrugs. As long as you watch your back and get somewhere safe by dark, it's not too bad a place as slums go. All right, let's skip asking him about Farad in the journal and just say farewell. All right, any named peoples around here? Just Coral, Giz Coral. Let's see if one of these other merchants... Ooh, she's named as well. Let's see if one of these other merchants is willing to buy our rings. Uh, what do you have? What now? This older merchant has a worldly look to him. His deep voice is gentle, but confident. Ah, hello there. Are you ready to sample some of the most delectable treats from across the plains, my good man? And I asked, what do you have? All manner of delicacies to delight your palate, my good man. Aborian fire seeds. We have tried those. They are very, very good. Gar bar root. Elysian pears. Crimson lotus petals. By Topian Shepherd's Bread, Shift Spice from the Chaos of Limbo, and Sea Plums are what I have at the moment. Merely five coppers for a taste of anything you like. Let's ask about something's taste. Hmm? We've tried fire seeds. Let's ask about Garbar Root. I can only suggest that you try it, my good man. And see for yourself. Mm. Actually, I had some questions. He shakes his head. Then I advise you to seek answers elsewhere, sir. I deal only in exotic foodstuffs, spices, and herbs. 
and have time nor care for little else. All right, farewell then. I'm not prepared at the moment to start dumping five coppers apiece into tasting some exotic foods, I think. Uh, what about Gis Coral here? You see a spindly looking merchant with a brush of gray and red stubble across his chin. He wears several layers of brightly colored robes, so much so that he looks like a flag with arms and legs. He is shaking slightly as you watch. Greetings. Aye, Giz Carl. He bows and spreads his trembling hands. As he does, you notice his hands and forearms are a twisted mass of black scar tissue, as if they were once badly burned. Ah, we found a comrade in scars. Um, how did you hurt your hands? Giz Coral doesn't seem to have heard you. He answers only with his spiel, delivered in the same flat monotone. Giz Coral buy cloth, sell cloth, wash cloth, mend cloth, and... He gestures at his layers of clothing with his shaking hands. Wear cloth. Okay. Um, but how did you hurt your hands? Giz Coral's monotone breaks. Gis coral, buy cloth, sell cloth, wash cloth, mend cloth, and he gestures at himself again, but his hands are shaking so badly that he cannot even finish. All right, we'll stop tormenting the man. Never mind. Can I see what you have? All right, so you've got bandages and needle and thread. Will you, perchance, buy my rings? You won't. Wonder what, oh, we can steal? Let's not steal. Wonder what is the deal with these merchants not buying rings? There's a hive merchant, and a hive merchant, and a hive dweller, and another dweller. All right, and a limb limb flying around. And what's this? A crude wooden cart. It looks like it would fall apart if anyone tried to use it. Okay, then. Well, let's talk to this named person here. Kosa Jai, this toothless old crone reeks of fish and brine. Spying your approach, she gives you a wide pink smile. Fish, my child. Fish heads, mayhap. Child, hardly. Oh, yes, yes. But a child you are to my ears. <laughs> Youngsters. I believe you're mistaken. Take a closer look. She shuffles up to you. The fish stink is nearly overpowering. The old woman squints at your face first, frowning, then into your eyes. Only then does she recoil in surprise. Oh my, how many years have those eyes seen? I do not know. How many do you think? Don't know, don't know. Too many, I'd say, but no matter. She leans close to whisper in your ear. It won't do to rattle the passers-by. Let's keep it our little secret. She resumes her normal tone of voice. So, fish, my child. <laughs> she pokes you in the belly. What are you offering exactly? Why, fish, my silly child. Fish of all sorts. And fish heads for those too short of jink for the whole ones. Teeny tiny fish heads. <laughs> Where do these fish come from? They're brought to Sigle from all over the plains, my boy. Would you like some? I sell only the heads, so do be short on jink. I don't need fish, but I had some questions. She shakes her little wrinkled head. No answers, have I? Only fish. All right, farewell then. Well, let's ask, maybe she'll actually let us sell or buy something from her. No fish heads. And I guess that's it. Goodbye. Hmm, how strange. I'm going to 
interact with the rest of these merchants and see if I can't sell my stuff. Okay, so this guy seems to be buying rings, so we'll sell those. Finally unload them. I have to try to remember that. It's this gentleman right here. What are these limb limbs, I wonder? This odd-looking little creature appears both insect and animal in origin. Its legs are oversized, but its arms are small, nearly vestigial, and a brightly speckled half-shell runs down its back. It sports twin pairs of insect-like wings and has tiny black eyes and a mouth that always appears to be smiling gleefully. Um, we're definitely not going to kick it. Can we pet it? Pew, pew! The Lim Lim bounces about merrily, its wings buzzing. It seems to enjoy the, f the affection immensely. Alright, well that's cute. Let's leave him alone.